In terms of overlanding and off-roading in Africa, the 76 has been a phenomenal choice. And I'm really, really excited about the full conversion on top of that, because first up, the 76 Land Cruiser is possibly one of the best overland vehicles you could choose in, in terms of heading in, off into Africa. Land Cruiser is always a good product. They're strong, they're reliable, and when going into the bush, that's exactly what you're looking for. And the fact that we managed to successfully fit the roof conversion to this vehicle has made me even more excited because it's always been somewhat of a challenge whether or not we'd be able to work within the space restraints that you have on this vehicle. And in actual fact, now that we've used the product, we're even more excited at the fact that it seems to be working really, really well. So, so I think if we can just take you through the product and show you exactly what we've done here, and we can just show you how we've laid this out and help you better understand just exactly what comes with a Thor roof conversion. In terms of the conversion itself, it's similar to most of our conversion. It's quite a simple process. You mark out the area that needs to be removed. And in this instance, you basically cut back from the rear end to about the front of the A pillar, which is also where the top hat runs through the lining or ceiling area, which retains a lot of its rigidity and strength. The roof conversion itself is it's quite a simple process. And those that have seen it or have done it know that once you've cut out, you literally apply the glues drop the new conversion on and you glue it in place. It's as simple as that. Uh, obviously there's a little bit of wiring to add the new areas to it but but once that's done glue sets and literally your your camper is fitted. The 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 roof conversion itself runs a double extrusion down the sides and the double extrusion is very useful because it allows us to be able to bolt on all the alucab accessories down either side. So whether it be that you're strapping on an awning or as you'll see on the other side a shower cube and we've gone so far as to now add jerry cans and the likes or you could be putting a high lift jack into that space and it works extremely well. And obviously on top of that, then it's the normal procedure where you can pop up tent, jump inside, go to bed, beds flip up, and we'll walk you through that stage next. So if you're looking in the back here, you can obviously see that we have carried the roller forming that we are now introducing into a lot more of our products into the roof conversion itself. Um, some of it's for uh, giving it a really nice look and feel, and other, obvious, obviously some of it is for structural, and in the roof itself there's a lot of structural, just like you'd find in a car roof, when you run large portions of metal, flat metal, you need to try and strengthen and rigidize that as much as possible, and the roller forming does just that. It helps to rigidize and firm up the metal itself. Similar processes to all our other roof conversions and, and rooftop tents and the likes, the stainless steel lockdown catches. Those obviously just keep the, the roof locked down in place and then you would ultimately pop the roof up. Um, bear in mind that up here, if you have a look, you see that we've actually fitted our table under the roof uh, under the load bars itself. Above that we've actually got a solar panel and we'll give you another angle perspective, perspective of the roof so that you can see what all is going on with the roof itself. Because bear in mind obviously that when you start to load a tent or anything onto the roof itself you are generally losing a vitally important space of your vehicle. Still working with small spaces, trying to maximize what all you can utilize. So we've tried to create the roof conversion in such a fashion that you can still utilize the space as best as possible while obviously not creating too much of a high area and too much wind drag and the like. So this is nice, nice and sleek. Uh, basically lower than a tent would generally be or a tent and a roof rack and all of that but still trying to offer as much as you would be able to get but pops up in seconds jump inside go to bed all your bedding's in place easy easy so let me just show you quickly how this how we would normally go about this now i'm just going to let you on a little trick that we normally use when we're overlanding especially when we're working with particularly high vehicles we go down to our local building shop or supermarket and we pick up what we call a little ladder or in our colloquialism south african terms a stuppy and it's just a little plastic step ladder which offers a little bit of added height it makes it easier for getting in and out of the vehicle and also while you're sitting in camp you can use it as a secondary seat or a secondary table so super useful um, so i use this just to get up and down easier it gives me a little bit more height and force to be able to open up uh, release the catches and then you can step on the back of the bumper and you give it a good 
punt to get it going. Bear in mind, just like any of the other roof conversions, you want to get it started because ultimately that's where most of the strength or pressure is re required. Just getting that initial lift, pull your elastic down and pretty much it's job done. So think about it this way guys, you just pulled into camp, you want to set up your tent, you've already done the job. Bed's ready for going to bed, you can just go in there, crash, go straight off to sleep. It's as simple and as easy as that. Right, so let me take you on the journey through the back end of the 76. This is kind of where you would lay out and set up um, how you'd best want to equip it. Now, currently, there's a lot of our own customizing going on in the back here, but we are in the, in the process of building a, a kit which will be made available for you to fit into the back of your own vehicle. So, so don't be concerned that you won't be able to get your hands on this. We are making something that will ultimately be able to go straight into the back of the 76. We've added a couple of extra things with it as well, and those are all getting in, going into the process of being developed for the 76. So ultimately, the Thor conversion will come with certain definite products. First being obviously the roof conversion, and then there's the cupboards and the window, window doors, the cupboards. Um, then we're doing molly plates for the back windows. Um, we can see here that we've done some molly plate for the back of the cupboards. So. The thinking behind that is that obviously you can attach little bags that could possibly be carrying things like headlights, useful equipments, extra batteries, medical kits. All these things can be attached to the molly plates. I don't have to explain to everybody how molly plate works, but, but it is a very convenient space. And even here, being inside the camper itself, you can sit inside this vehicle and, and pop the beds up and you're able to sit inside. So you've got seating left and right, it allows you to escape the bad weather, sit inside, change in here, do your thing. And if you look up top here, or if you look into it here, the, the bed itself will pop up. So these little bed sections, can both pop up. So we've done the split bed section and the reason and the thinking behind the split bed is obviously there is nothing more frightening than waking my wife while she sleeps. So by splitting the bed section I'm able to allow her to continue sleeping in bed while I pop up the one side of the bed and I can climb out of that hatch. Or alternatively somebody can be sleeping inside and you can sit or stand to the one side of the bed which is vitally important because obviously um, we are more restricted or limited in length for the bed section. So in our other conversions where the roof is longer, you can flip the entire back section up, whereas because you're working with a slightly shorter length, you still want a good length bed, but you want it to be able to get in and out of it while your partner is sleeping in there. And the double split, the two hatches, works really nicely, and we'll give you a better cam camera angle, angle shortly to just show you exactly how that, that split bed section works. On the back side, I think I told you, there's some molly plates. We've got cushions, as you said, as I said here. You can see over here, I've left a bit of a gap because what I put here is we've got a little, a little ice maker that fits perfectly into the space and uh, you can strap it down, plug it in. I get into camp, I pop my ice machine on and well, guess what? I've got ice for whichever beverage I may choose to pop my ice into. And that is first prize. Great, great opportunity. Left and right, we've put, well, actually, first up, let me just get into it. You can see we've, we've fabricated a frame here to carry the ammo boxes. Now, the ammo boxes allows us to be able to put our gear into specific ammo boxes. And some of the, the tip, a little trick that I can teach you is that we number our ammo boxes, and then we put into each ammo box a, a certain, certain, gear. Uh, and what I actually do is on my phone is I normally just keep some notes. So in box number five, we're keeping, let's call it the washing up gear, because I can assure you that you easily get confused amongst the boxes. So having notes and just making the notes to the boxes is super useful. Left and right of that, we just added the, the little chairs from Front Runner, And as you know, they're useful little chairs and they take up very little space. You can put them one either side and generally now once you're in camp those can go under the awning and stay out in camp when you go to sleep at night. So even if they aren't and if you put them away they're not in the way, they're out of the, out of the way, you can still climb in and out and makes it nice and easy. So four ammo boxes so on, on left, four right and uh, 
you basically uh, sorry four four either side and then you you can actually pack another two up front so you go up to six ammo boxes into this build and then you can still put bags up top on the bed sections while you travel or you still have the center aisle down the middle which allows you to store extra gear obviously you want to try and keep it as minimal as possible but uh, there is actually a remarkably large amount of space with such a small vehicle left and right we have 40 liters of water so we've got 40 liter, 40 liter water tanks one under here one under there that's 80 liters of water in the vehicle which is a huge amount of water first prize would be able to put the water tanks underneath but the 76 has very little storage space underneath so unfortunately you have to put the water tanks inside the vehicle and they can be a little bit noisy off-road but what you invest i generally invest in first and foremost when going off-road is a really good sound system so you can a get rid of the rattles and b drown out the water noises because you have to consider that this is a vitally important thing to know is that in a station wagon when traveling off-road you hear everything whereas when i'm used to a pickup and in a pickup it's all sitting in the back and you have no idea what's rattling and banging but you can have two teaspoons knocking self knocking against each other in the back of here and you will hear it so so a good sound system is actually not a bad way to just drown that out while you travel some other little tricks and accessories is obviously the molly plate here it gives you um, the convenience of being able to just attach gear anything that you might use to the back end and we're still working on a, on a full molly plate configuration for the back end and the reason why I want to do that is that standing at the back here this is a very convenient place that should you be stopping somewhere and you want to quickly make a cup of coffee I'm going to make my bags able to carry a little jet boil so a gas stove or the likes to be able to stop and we pop in a drop down table so there are various makes of drop down tables on the market guys so I'm not going to get into who's building what but having a little drop down table at the back here is super convenient I would put one at the back of my vehicle any day of the week because it's just the perfect spot to either when you're unpacking or unloading or doing something you can work right here we've added a little light on our vehicle so you can see so we've got a little led work light that allows us to work at the back we've even gone so far as to add some cigarette lighter jacks and usb point charging points so we can put phones and camera gear and everything at the back here to charge at the same time we also run an inverter up front and then we've got a full pack of plugs here so so we use this at, at quite a useful space for us to just charge and, and pack gear in and and so the little table at the back for me is super convenient so in terms of the bed section it's pretty straightforward you enter from the rear as per normal but now as i've explained or try to explain we're running a double hatch system here so it's either one little hatch pops in and i would then obviously try and enter in from just the single hatch uh, and it could be either left or light, right just depending on which way around the, you're lying or you do both so in terms of opening them both it obviously is more convenient bear in mind now that this can also be a changing living space um, you can sit around down here but the whole bed also folds up so you can actually physically fold up the whole bed so then that gives us a whole heap more space um, so we could both sit in here as in partners and the likes access your fridge some of your gear can be uh, positioned here or bags can open up here or you can leave bags on top of the fridge itself so super convenient you can sit inside but should you be wishing to go to bed then you just lean reach up grab your bed section your your bedding's all in place you fold it down and you jump up by stepping on here and off you go into the bed section so in terms of tent uh, we have the dual layer canvas ripstop canvas obviously waterproof with the midget and of course they work combined so you can obviously separate the canvas door from from the, the actual midget netting or you can also open the midget lining which is nice because sometimes when you're in a really warm climate and you haven't got bugs around it's midday you're having an afternoon sleep in your tent you want to be able to actually drop the midget because the midget because it's so fine has the tendency that it may buffer the airflow through here so you want to be able to open both midget or or and canvas so it's very convenient that you have the ability to to do both in terms of the roof lining we have a new automotive lining that's uh, fitted to these these units and um, they the, 
they have a, uh, they then insulate it again with a polyethylene layer behind that, and that works very conveniently. Each uh, our roof bags are now fixed with automotive clips, so they can actually be they're not riveted in anymore, so you don't have the same condensation issues, and also can be clipped in and out. So much much better, more efficient way to to fit that, and easier to work with. Another important factor to understand is that on the 76, the windows themselves are bolt-in, bolt-out windows. So you can actually bolt the window out of the vehicle and bolt the cupboards back in place. Now, if you look at the cupboard itself, you'll see that the cupboard itself, it actually expands outside of the vehicle a little bit but it also goes inside. So it gives you a deeper cupboard, but it doesn't necessarily then take away a whole heap of space on the inside. So you still have the ability to sit inside and you also have a lot more storage space in the cupboards. And I'll show you that shortly. But it is useful because obviously the 76 is somewhat limited in space. Being a slightly shorter vehicle, you want the ability to be able to store as much gear as you can and to have it as easily accessible as possible because obviously making it easily accessible makes life easy and that's what it's all about you want to be able to get at your gear whenever you need it as quickly as you can right so in terms of cupboards you have obviously the choice of whether you'd like to be kitting them out in, as, a, as a recovery or a kitchen cupboard uh, being right hand drive vehicle, vehicle, we generally choose to put the kitchen onto the left side because pulling over on, a, on the side of the road makes it easier to have your kitchen easily accessible on the left. And obviously we put the awning in the same space so you've got covered kitchen on the left side, easy, easily to do. Um, you can also switch that around if you want and you can also just choose to have a blank cupboard if you want and you can kit it any which way you like. Obviously we offered it, offer it kit, kitted because it just makes it a little bit easier than trying to kit it out yourself. And here we have a full kitchen set up so that you've got everything that you generally will need in terms of basic kitchen utensils. We choose to do this in this configuration and not the foam filled out cupboards because we find that the foam filled cupboards tend to be a little bit limiting. So in other words, should you have this all squashed up with foam and you can only squeeze that container there and there and there, it's nice so that you know if you're missing something, but should you have an extra container or you want to shove something else in, you are limited to not being able to do that. So I like it like this because I often shove in extra things and, and, and extra gear all around. And for example, I've thrown in some of our chutneys and other couple of, so, so I like to have mine done this way. So this is a choice of how Alicab tends to do their cupboards. And as I say, it's up to others as to how they may choose to do theirs. So I think it's quite important that I point out a couple of things inside the cupboard as well while I'm here. First up, as per normal, our lights are dual colors. So you can switch to a light uh, brightness intensity, or obviously if you hold down, you can switch over to the red colors and the red colors have the advantage of attracting a lot less bugs. And also they also limit the, the night vision blindness. And that can be super important when you're in the bush, especially in some of the remote areas that we go into, we can have hyena or lion in the camp. So if you turn around from a bright light and look back, you can suddenly be, there can be animal right there and you wouldn't know it. So it's useful to have the red, but most importantly, it works very well in terms of, of uh, the bugs. And again, if you are night blind, you'll walk into your chair or into a tree or a log. Uh, the tops of the cupboards, we do the center flex hinges like we do on our canopy doors. And we like these because should water be falling onto the door itself, it runs down the door and then it's pushed left and right and not straight down into your cupboard, which is obviously very important. Otherwise, everything in the cupboard ends up getting wet. So let me just turn that down. And yeah, so I think that uh, then obviously you've got lightweight doors and you can actually see that we've done some roller forming in the door. So the Roller forming is just some shaping in the metal and the shaping in the metal, as you can see here, just it gives a bit of rigidity to the door, but it doesn't add any weight. So you can still keep the doors nice and light, but you've added a little bit more strength to the door itself. So here are some of the cool features in terms of the roof conversion itself. Uh, the, double, the double extrusion along the side, the, the nut slot extrusion, the double nut slot extrusion, obviously gives the ability to attach equipment, as I mentioned before. And I'm not sure if you picked up on it, but the, the roller forming in the roof, A, gives it really nice features and lines, but of course also adds to the strength. 
top side of the roof conversion itself we had the roof tray and the roof tray gives you a, another area to pack gear so as I mentioned already, the, it's very important that we have the ability to add some of our gear to the roof itself because bear in mind that by putting the roof conversion on you are losing, losing the ability to put a full-on roof rack onto the roof, but by putting the roof tray on it gives you to pack some gear onto the roof tray. And things like firewood and the likes, you need to have some space to add, you can put them on there or alternatively you could add some more ammo boxes to that. Behind that you've got the solar panel and that fires up uh, energy into the battery and keeps that going. As you can see along here, we've got the molly plates. Molly plates uh, allows us to possibly uh, attach things like spades, axes, little useful pieces of gear that you take into the bush. As I've mentioned before, more areas you have to attach things and put fit gear to, the better. Because of the double extrusions, we've also been able to add uh, a couple of jerry cans. And as you know, I love to carry an extra bit of fuel. It's obviously some of the areas that we go into Africa, you have to have a bit of extra fuel. And a jerry can is vitally important because you never know when you may need to fetch fuel, carry fuel and the likes for somebody else. So two jerry cans strap onto the side of the roof conver conversion. Or alternatively, you may have an awning. If you don't carry the awning, you can have two jerry cans on that side as well. But uh, we've gone shower cube, two jerry cans works well. Cupboard on this side. This side of the cupboard, we've used it as our recovery side. So we put in some recovery gear or off-road gear or bush gear or straps or tools or anything that you may need. So this is just our general purpose cupboard for equipment and that goes into this side here. Also again, super convenient and nice and easy to access. Right, so let me just uh, close up. So again, you just pop those elastics to the outer side, lift those hands up a little bit on the, on the strap, and as you come down, tuck the, tuck the sides in. And remember, you can just use your arms to bring the tents in and make sure just that you've packed your bedding in nice and neatly out the way. Uh, and as you get down to the bottom here, just tuck the last bit of the camper in. And catches over, pins back in, and that's job done. And that, folks, is a wrap on the Thor conversion. I'm going camping.